Concerning the carving of the mandibular canine, uh, you should know the differences between upper and lower canine. First of all, as you see, the crown of the maxillary canine appears shorter and more wider. The mandibular canines appears more longer and thinner. The elevations, as you see here, my cervical ridge and the labial ridge is prominent than this cervical and labial ridge of the mandibular. All the elevations actually in the mandibular are poorly developed compared to the maxillary. Okay, even when I look here, you will find my cingulum even in the maxillary canine. Hmm? It is more prominent than that in the mandibular one. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do in the carving of the mandibular canine, I will follow my steps. First step was the crown lens, right? I used to make what? To have my crown lens measurement, that will be 11 millimeters. Okay, take your measurement, make your midline, take the length of the slopes. Here my distal slope will be at three millimeter from up, measure three millimeters, and measure two millimeters mesially. Okay, then take your measurement at the neck will be mesodistal dimension here it will be three and three. Here up at the slope lines will be 3.5 and 3.5 then join your lines as usual after you join this trapezoid outline with the cusp tip your slopes one distal and one mesial when the distal is longer you have to cut all the excess wax you find here okay this is step one just the measurements measurements of the slopes was in the upper canine four and three here it is three and two because the slopes are at a higher position the crown is longer and the measurements of the crown then step two after you cut this what you will find if you remember here i have my trapezoid longer slope hmm? then shorter slope like this this is my wax block this is step two go for the mesial side Take the line of the height of contour, if you know, this is three millimeters. Measure here an upper line like this. Don't forget your midline, of course. On the proximal side, this is step two, as you know. This is my buccal surface, and this will be my lingual surface. So, what is going to be done now? To measure my labio lingual dimension here it will be at the neck 3.5 3.5 and here it will be 4 and 4 join in the same way we used to join in the maxillary canine in the maxillary canine we used to join where to the midline right neglect the presence of the slope line as you know and go straight for the midline but here it is a mandibular tooth, so I have lingual inclination. So mark one milli here, one milli lingual, okay, one milli lingual, and join this line to this one milli lingual. And when you mark this on the top here of the wax, huh? just make one line, which is the new line you join on, okay? Then from this point, one millimeter lingually, again, join a straight line to the other point. And remove again all the wax as you, we used to do in the maxillary canine. As you see here, if I compare, my cusp tip is lingually inclined. Why? Because I, in the second step, when I have my measurement here, 3.5, 3.5, 4 and 4, and I joined up this point, not on the center, it is one millimeter lingually. Okay, after I make this, hmm, go for the steps of the labial ridge and the lingual ridge. If you remember, the steps I used to do here, hmm, I make this point, intersection of the slope with the midline, and go for the new small triangles, cut here, Cut here, 
still reach what the shape of the labial ridge as you know in the lingual side no difference in this step in the formation of my labial ridge and lingual ridge here after i finish cutting i will find my labial ridge in the middle like this just make slight roundation all this area okay the surface is convex slightly convex as this the difference in the lingual part what i'm going to draw again the same as i have drawn in the upper but here when i draw the lingual ridge don't make it continuous to the cingulum no just make it here till the incisal third don't make it so uh, cervically located till reach the cingulum no then after that you're going to remove all the wax inside here to make a shallow fossa that is make it shallow take care don't make it deep and it form just one fossa not two as the upper canine okay in the upper canine i used to make what to make that my drawing here like this the margins the incisal uh, the, the lingual ridge from the incisal part to the cingulum right lines i draw first then i remove these areas but here i'm going to draw the same way i'm drawing in the paper and then after that when i remove remove this alone and remove this alone like as if i am making the upper remove this part and this part then after that cut this area between yeah, and don't make the removal from the center first no remove first from the fossa here remove from the second fossa after you finish the two fossa as we have done in the upper go and cut this area slightly preserving the cingulum outline and here will be the end of the inside the lingual ridge okay then make the same steps concerning the cervical line curvature the root go as the same we have done in the upper without the presence of these deep developmental depressions they are just shallow depressions okay and this will be the outcome of my mandibular canine when i look as you see when i look here incisally like this i should find what I can see more of my labial surface. Why? Because the tooth is lingually inclined. This lingual inclination is the first step of difference between upper and lower. The second step of difference is the curving of the lingual side. When I have my lingual side, after I finished my labial ridge and lingual ridge, what I'm going to do, draw in this way here, draw in this way on the wax like this as i told you before okay make your cingulum by the back of the curver make it, a, make it at the with this area make it like this as you know half circle like this then here in the upper i used to make two long lines like this no now i'm going to make it like this then after you draw, try to remove this area alone, remove that area alone. Then, after you finish, just connect these areas. Remove it to, to connect the both fossa. If I'm going to remove this, then remove this. Then go here, slightly remove it in the middle part. So when I look here, it will be convex, concave, convex. Lingual, the cusp is lingually inclined. The elevations, all my elevations is poorly developed. The cingulum, the cervical ridge, and even my labial ridge.